Well, friends, the rumors were true. Google has killed the Bard brand. It is now just Gemini and Gemini Ultra, their most advanced model, the one that actually competes with GPT-4, is now available. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Earlier this week, an Android developer found a changelog message that suggested that we would be getting the most advanced model of Gemini this week, and that along with it, Google would be making a big marketing change, moving the Bard brand to Gemini. Now, this is something that we've seen as sort of a trend among these big companies. They start with one brand and ultimately start to settle on a cross-cutting brand that refers to everything that they're touching with AI. I told the whole story of Bing shifting to Copilot yesterday, for example, which is, of course, encapsulated by their Super Bowl ad, which was just released. Well, like I said at the top, the rumors are true. Bard is now Gemini and Ultra. Their most advanced model is actually available. Jack Krosick from the Google Bard team says, Today, Bard becomes Gemini, available on web and mobile, new app in the Play Store, starting to roll out today, and introducing Gemini Advanced, access to our most capable model, Ultra 1.0. Jack continues, Bard was built to be the direct way to access Google's AI models. Last week, Gemini Pro went worldwide and completed the transition into the Gemini era. Gemini is more than state-of-the-art models. It's an ecosystem you will see through our products and APIs. Hence, Bard is now Gemini. Gemini Advanced provides access to our most capable model, Ultra 1.0. We worked with 100-plus AI expert trusted testers across multiple disciplines. They've told us they prefer Gemini Advanced for its longer context conversations, 32K, and the ability to role-play complex scenarios. It also doesn't interrupt your flow with low rate limits. Now, from there, he goes on to a lot of other details, including discussing the new app experience on Android and iOS in the Google app, as well as another new feature called Double Check, which allows users to double check the information that's coming back from Gemini, and finally discusses the pricing structure for this most advanced Ultra 1.0 model. Users can try it for two months for free, and then it is $20 a month after. Well, $19.99 technically. Now, there are some things that are not there yet that make it not as feature complete as ChatGPT. These include multimodal upgrades, interactive coding, deeper data analysis, file uploads, multilingual, and more. Now, there is a lot that makes this interesting. As The Verge points out, quote, Google is famous for having a million similar products with confusingly different names and seemingly nothing in common. That pattern, however, has been broken with the release of Gemini. The Verge also points out the stakes. They write, it's not a surprise that Google is so all in on Gemini, but it does raise the stakes for the company's ability to compete with OpenAI, Anthropic Perplexity, and the growing set of other powerful AI competitors on the market. In our tests just after the Gemini launch last year, the Gemini-powered Bard was very good, nearly on par with GPT-4, but it was significantly slower. Now Google needs to prove it can keep up with the industry as it looks to both build a compelling consumer product and try to convince developers to build on Gemini and not with OpenAI. Only a few times in Google's history has it seemed like the entire company was betting on a single thing. Once that turned into Google+, and we know how that went. But this time, it appears Google is fully committed to being an AI company, and that means Gemini might be just as big as Google. Now, the only thing that I disagree with from this Verge analysis is the idea that going all in on Gemini raises the stakes for the company's ability to compete. Those stakes were raised by the very existence of leaders in the AI space that weren't Google. For a company that has been at the very forefront of innovation in this space, it was shocking last year to see how far it was behind throughout the entire year. It was, in fact, to many people stunning. Indeed, it put them in a position where they really had to announce Gemini in December, even though they couldn't make Ultra available at that time. The exciting thing is, of course, is that because we didn't have access to the Ultra version of the model back in December, we simply had to take their assertion that it matched or exceeded GPT-4 in numerous areas at face value or choose not to believe it. Now we get to test it for ourselves, but there are some people who have had a little bit longer of a chance to already dig into it. Popular creator Marquez Brownlee says, Okay, so I've been testing out Google's Gemini on a few phones for a few weeks now. Some things I've noticed that stood out. Upsides, tons of useful new generative features, can write letters, craft trip plans, create images, etc., all the good stuff. Notably better semantic understanding of random fact-based questions. Downside, it's missing some classic Google Assistant features like home control and adding to shopping lists. The new pop-up UI is a little more complex, but you can get used to it. Renaming it is going to confuse a lot of people for no reason. Bindu Ready from Abacus writes, My initial thoughts still continues to be somewhat nerfed and refuses to answer questions. Refuse to generate a simple illustration of George Clooney, ChatGPT is better. Missing PDF upload. Answers do seem better than the previous version. Seems to have a reasoning vibe. However, it does not answer some hard questions that GPT does. 
For example, it didn't get, in a room I have only three sisters. Anna is reading a book. Alice is playing a match of chess. What's the third sister, Amanda, doing? The answer is the third sister is playing chess. GPT-4 nails it. Overall, we plan to do a lot more analysis, but first impressions are good, but not great. TLDR, I don't think it will make a material difference to how Bard was doing before, especially if their plan is to charge for this. However, it's always good to have more players in the market. Now, someone who has a much more positive take is V. Mauchowitz, who writes, As someone who had early access, I can say that Gemini Ultra is damn impressive. When it is good, it is excellent, and this includes the most common queries, especially learning and looking up facts. I've switched to it as my default LLM. Now, Zvi is a prolific blogger and super compelling thinker, so I am inclined to take his take on this with a little bit more confidence than some of the others. And then, of course, there's Professor Ethan Mollick from Wharton. Ethan has had access to Gemini for the last six weeks and wrote an extensive post on his One Useful Thing blog, giving his perspective. The post is called Google's Gemini Advanced, Tasting Notes and Implications. Subtitle, and then there were two. Now, one thing that Ethan makes clear is that he is not trying to test Gemini on the basis of benchmarks. Instead, he wanted to give a subjective mix of opinions based on his usage. He writes, let me start with the headline. Gemini Advanced is clearly a GPT-4 class model. The statistics show this, but so does a month of our informal testing. And this is a big deal because OpenAI's GPT-4, the paid version of ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot, has been the dominant AI for well over a year, and no other model has come particularly close. Prior to Gemini, we had only one advanced AI model to look at, and it is hard drawing conclusions with a data set of one. Now there are two, and we can learn a few things. Now, I just want to stop here and put a fine point on this. It really is remarkable that for an entire year in this insanely fast-moving space, there was nothing that could really come close to GPT-4. I've actually argued in the past that having another GPT-4 class model on the scene and actually available represents a major transitional moment for the industry. From the period that was entirely defined by ChatGPT from November 2022 when it launched to basically today, to this new era that's coming, whatever it happens to look like. Now that said, Ethan continues that Gemini Advanced does not obviously blow away GPT-4. He writes, it is really good, but I would concur with the test that suggests it is roughly equivalent. When it comes to the various strengths and weaknesses of these platforms, he writes, GPT-4 is much more sophisticated about using code and accomplishes a number of hard verbal tasks better. Gemini is better at explanations and does a great job integrating images in search. Both are weird and inconsistent and hallucinate more than you would like. And that gets to a really interesting section of the piece called It's Full of Ghosts. Ethan writes, No one has a great definition of sentience, which is okay because LLMs are in no way sentient. They are software systems designed to create human-like language. But there is a weirdness to GPT-4 that isn't sentience, but also isn't like talking to a program. A weirdness that only comes out after you spend enough hours playing with the AI and getting unnerved or delighted or both by its unexpected abilities and seeming intelligence. There was a famous controversial paper put out by Microsoft Research soon after the release of GPT-4 called Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence that tried to put this argument into scientific terms, but ended up just calling it Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence. It is the illusion of a person on the other end of the line, even though there is nobody there. GPT-4 is full of ghosts. Gemini is also full of ghosts. Seriously, if you use the system for a while, I can almost guarantee at least one moment when you stand up from your desk, walk around the room, and wonder what is going on. Now, his takeaway is that the sparks that we saw in GPT-4 are not based on GPT-4, but are byproducts of GPT-4 class models. From a tone and personality perspective, he suggests that GPT-4 is more bland, where Gemini is more friendly, agreeable, and has a, quote, tendency towards wordplay. But ultimately, he says these models are really, really similar. Now, the other thing that he argues about Gemini is that it, quote, illuminates a vision of AI as a powerful integrated personal assistant. He basically argues that the barred integration with the Google ecosystem of Gmail, Google Docs, travel tools, etc. was interesting, but too dumb to actually use. Whereas now, he says, with a smarter brain in the form of Gemini Advanced, you can start to do some really interesting things that, at their best, seem magical. Go through my emails, tell me which are important, and draft replies for each. Look up my next conference and plan a trip I would like. He says it isn't there yet, but it is very much closer to being an actual assistant rather than the limited series and Alexas we have seen in the past. That is, in part, why I suspect that Gemini Advanced is the start, not the end, of a wave of AI development. We can start to see a world where AI agents act on our behalf, a GPT-4 class model is not quite strong enough to power these agents, but we are getting close. So really interesting stuff. And ultimately what we come back to is that we are now living in a two GPT-4 level world, which I think is going to have some fairly significant implications that we will discover as it happens. 
For now, though, an exciting day in the AI world. I appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.